how we sold a business for 50% more in six months. I'm Arthur Petropoulos. I'm the managing partner here at Hillview Partners. We're a middle market, lower middle market, M&A and capital advisory firm, helping companies generating a million to $10 million in EBITDA, pre-tax profit, sell themselves and secure capital. We sell businesses on average for 50% premium in terms of value, optimizing as well for the structure of deals, transition for ownership, and stakeholder and employee consideration and retention. Many of these videos, we've talked about some of the ideas, the concepts, the underpinning fundamentals of what we do. Today, we wanted to walk through a more specific example of an exit for a business. So we're working with a business that was a distributor. They effectively buy large amounts of things and they sell smaller amounts of these things to companies in specific industries, specific niches, and specific geographies. There's also a value add component to this distribution in the sense of Think of buying lots of disjointed parts and kitting them, packaging them, things of that nature as well. So this company was within that one to 10 million EBITDA range towards the bottom half of that spectrum in this particular situation. But nonetheless, the example is highly representative. This company had an unsolicited offer at about four and a half times EBITDA. And so an acquirer was going to come in and pay this price. Part of it was going to be in cash. A lot of it was going to be over time. There was going to be a long duration in which ownership was going to be required to stay on board with the company. Think three to five years. And there was no protections against any firing or laying off of any of the employees. And so from our perspective, not optimal value, not optimal structure, not optimal transition for ownership, and certainly not optimal retention and protection of employees. And so this is the juncture at which the opportunity came to us. We had the conversation with ownership, in which case they said, look, this isn't the ideal outcome, but it is an outcome. And we don't really know what the market could offer and if there's going to be better. From our experience in doing this over and over again, whatever unsolicited offer comes in for the company, it is 99% of the time there is something better out there. And even if you ultimately landed with that same particular part, Party, they would be better from that party if a process were undertaken. And so we were appreciative. The owner of the business put their trust in us to go and facilitate this exercise. And so we went out to the market to sell this business. And so let's get into the timeline of how we started this. Day zero to day 21, we were putting materials together. We were crystallizing the narrative of the business, building up our data room, building up our materials, highlighting for the business, the fundamentals, the access and the capabilities. What were the fundamental numbers of profitability of the business and EBITDA? What was the access that they had to, to what end markets, to what industries, to what geographies? And what was the capabilities? What about their business was proprietary? What about their business was special? Why did people pay more to utilize them than purely seek the lowest cost provider? And so with that narrative put together, we simultaneously researched the market of who would be a prospective acquirer. And so as we've discussed in other videos, we looked at strategic companies, that being operating companies in same or similar spaces, private equity firms that either owned portfolio companies or did not own portfolio companies, as well as family offices, independent sponsors, search funds, and kind of running down the spectrum there. But in this particular situation, they had particular access to certain end markets, they had particular capabilities that were unique, and therefore, we felt the best fit was going to be to either a strategic or a private equity backed strategic, where there was value to be gleaned from, again, the said access and capabilities. And so day 21, we were in the market talking to these parties. From day 21 to day 60, we built our audience from one, the party that had initially put in the offer, to about 200 parties. Again, running all of the spectrum of categories of parties and iterating the dialogues. And so based on our research, which we've discussed in prior videos from internal databases, external databases, AI, our own research people that we have on our team that all they're doing is research and then hitting the market and having many, many conversations and bringing people in. And so that's through having many conversations through many channels and bringing that interested audience up. Now, initially we're out there on an anonymous basis, not disclosing the name of the company until we've adequately vetted that the interested party is bona fide. From there, they're signing a non-disclosure agreement and then we're giving them access to certain information. Again, at this point in time, they're not getting names of clients, they're not getting names of employees, and they're truly just getting a sense for the fundamentals, access capabilities of the business. So day 60 happens, we're up to about 200 parties, and now we start the chiseling process back down towards offers. And that incorporates asking for follow-up questions, asking for write-ups of their thesis on it, understanding where this is the missing puzzle piece for what they're trying to do. And we obviously researched that proactively to know that these parties had some of these missing puzzle pieces in terms of they were addressing all geographies except this one. They were addressing end markets except this one. They had certain clients that other people wanted. They had certain capabilities that could be sold to the other party's clients. And so by virtue of doing this, we A, knew who to reach out to, but B, we're testing every party that we did reach 
reach out to to make sure that they were bona fide. If somebody says, yeah, I guess it could be interested. Yeah, I guess this could be good. That's okay, but that's not going to get the best results. You want pain if you're to take something away from someone. We want this thing so bad because it fits this particular thing that we really want to do that there is an aversion to the loss. We will put forth a strong offer because we do not want to lose the opportunity is a different framework, if you will, than purely just thinking of it in terms of, I guess this would be good. Would it be good to have a cupcake? Sure. Would it be really good not to get punched in the face? Much more. And so day 60 to day 90, we're chiseling down and we've got many different steps along the way, in which case we're shaking the trees as we call it to separate the wheat from the chaff, to make sure that the parties that are interested stay interested, that they are reactive, that we are having many dialogues with them, that they're submitting the information we ask for, the proof in terms of their capabilities, their interests, their thesis. And in doing that, we ultimately boil down from day 60 to day 90 from about 200 interested parties to 10 to 12 offers in any situation. And I think in this situation, there was 11 offers. From there, we are lining up all offers next to each other in terms of, again, the key variables, value, structure, transition, employee considerations. And from there, we are further negotiating with these different parties, figuring out who's going to be the optimal counterparty, obviously communicating this the entire way, as we do on a weekly basis, if not more often with our client, giving them insights and transparency into what's happening, who is where, and in what direction the dialogues are going. And so from these 11 initial offers, we boil it down to five very, very strong offers that ultimately pivoted from indications of interest to letters of intent. Some other parties have submitted letters of intent as well. But the key five that we then set up formal meetings with ownership to further gauge the veracity of the offers and further understand just how compelling the opportunity was for these different parties. And so in our exercises, we are not drowning our clients with having to get every minute piece of information into the data room. On the front end, we save formal diligence process after offers to gather up a lot of the more granular information tax returns, bank balances, ledgers, things of that nature. On the front end, it's just the core pieces of information to craft the narrative. In our situations, we say we want to get to these offers with 10 hours of our client's time. So the initial part of the time is really just helping us gather some information on the front end. And probably the second half of the time are these meetings, whether Zoom or in person, with the interested parties after letters of intent oftentimes have been received. And so with those in tow, we are then negotiating optimizing all of the terms of the deal. And then by day 100, we have a signed letter of intent and we enter into a confirmatory diligence period. And so confirmatory being the key word. We don't want to enter into diligence when selling a business with someone to say, well, I really want to confirm that I like the business. Well, I think it's going to be good. No, we want to know you're dead set on the deal happening. You have the interest, you have the capabilities, you have the experience. And now we are simply looking to do a quality of earnings to make sure that all the numbers line up and tie out, a legal review of the documents and contracts to make sure there's no lingering risk or liabilities, and then we are closing the deal. Now, typically, and depending on who's buying, what the financing source is, commitments, approvals, and whatnot, now typically we will say diligence can be a 60-day exercise. We oftentimes see it dragged to about 75 days. Conservatively speaking, we'll target 80 to 90 days. And as such, we have a six month process start to finish. With this business, we went out to the market at day 21, built up an audience of 200 parties by day 60, chiseled down to 11 offers by day 90, negotiated an agreed upon letter of intent, executed and entered into an exclusive confirmatory diligence period at day 100, and then formalized the deal and closed by day 180. Six months start to finish, a value, and in our situation, because of the process of bringing all of the parties side by side, pushing forward, accentuating not just the fundamentals, but the access and the capabilities and making it a competitive exercise, the value was a seven times EBITDA multiple versus the initial offer of four and a half times, which I believe is a 55, 56% premium. The structure of the deal was 90% at closing, 10% over a one year period, largely predicated on the passing of time. The transition period for ownership was a tapering one year, about 90 days of doing the same thing, three months of a weekly meeting or such, and about six months of being available to take phone calls and respond to questions as they come up. And from an employee standpoint, we're able to assure the ongoing employment of the key employees for a meaningful amount of time post-transaction, actually put them in a position for some opportunities for advancement within the larger organization. So as much as some of these videos discuss theories, concepts, foundational considerations for our business, this is truly how the process works. And this is an example of how we were able to get into a situation and within 180 days have a far better outcome, a far more efficacious, effective, efficient process in which our client had perfect visibility into every step along the way, saw exactly what was happening, had all of the controls in front of them while we led the charge 
and ultimately deliver the best outcome. So that's the thought for today. Hope the week's getting off to a good start for everyone. Keep pushing forward. God bless. We'll see everyone next time. 